Charlie says. When we are all waiting patiently at the traffic lights, there's nothing more aggravating than the chap who cuts in. We all know that this show of bad manners saves no time. So don't be rude on the road. Take D, E, A, T, H off the roads and make our roads safe. Be a better driver. Mention the word courtesy to most road users today and they'll probably laugh. <laughs> For instance, you get a nice orderly queue of traffic. And there's always some road hog tries to jump it. It's enough to give you blood pressure. When it comes to crossing on a busy corner, you can be there all day for all the traffic cares. First come, first served. And the devil take the hindmost. And yet, how nice it could be if people showed a little courtesy, a little more patience. A little more give and take. After you. No, after you. A little more consideration could make life so much easier. So please don't be rude on the road. <laughs> The ways of the farmer have changed greatly over the years, and so have his pieces of machinery. But he still works from dawn to dusk and requires a good night's sleep. Noise at night travels far. It also travels quite away during the day. roads have special dangers. Care and patience are needed when passing farm animals or bulky, slow-moving farm machinery. Careless parking may block the entrance to fields or farm buildings. So go carefully on country roads and park with consideration. Remember, too, that loudly played radios are annoying both to the farmer and other visitors to the countryside. Most dogs enjoy a day in the country. But their exuberance is not always appreciated by the locals. Calves and lambs are often born dead because their mothers have been frightened by dogs. Now this farm dog is trained not to chase the animals, so train your dog to obey you. If he doesn't obey, put him on a lead when near farm animals. People who let their dogs go berserk in the country are often not much better themselves. They have no respect for the farmer's property, his gates and walls. Public footpaths across farmland are there for your use, but to stray from them causes unnecessary damage to crops, including grass. The hedges and walls in the country are not just for decoration. They are functional ones to keep sheep and cattle safe and away from all the crops the farmer grows. The farmer often has to leave his machinery unattended. It is costly equipment, so never interfere with it. Unlocked barns and buildings house seeds and fertilizers and other valuable equipment. So please, leave the farmer's things alone. Respect his way of life, his animals, crops and machinery. 
Protect also the wildlife of the countryside and don't follow the example of the fox. Things that start off in an innocent way can cause a lot of harm. If we do this, the trees will suffer. Trees are valuable as well as beautiful. Their health and beauty will also suffer if blossom is torn off or branches are broken. If wild plants are uprooted, they will soon become rare. Leave them for others to see. Let birds and wild animals lead their lives undisturbed. If it is necessary for you to light a fire to cook, make sure you keep it under proper control. Fire is lethal when left to its own devices. It will destroy all in its path. Moors, woodlands, young plantations and wildlife farmlands and livestock. All can be lost in a short time through carelessness. On a fine summer's day, besides the smoke from your fire, other strange things take to the air. Litter. A good job tins can't fly. But they do. And so do some bottles. Rivers and streams are good landmarks from up here. And you'd be surprised at some of the things we see. Sheep and cattle often get hurt by broken glass or by tins. And that harvester could be put out of action by a broken bottle. Remember too that plastic bags are dangerous to animals. They may suffocate if help is not at hand. The countryside is not provided with litter bins. So follow the country code and take your litter home. Whenever I step into my car, the strangest thing happens. I turn into a sort of big lizard. You, sir, have turned into a dinosaur. Oh, perhaps I ought to see my doctor. It's all very odd. Perhaps it's the weather. No, it's um, psychological. Like the dinosaur, some drivers haven't adjusted themselves to changing conditions. But I'm a very good driver. Passed my test first time, years ago. Exactly. But it's experience that counts. Look at these kids. Some of them can only just have left school. Those kids, they know a thing or two. Take the new road signs, for instance. Do you know them? What's that? That. And that. Quickly now. Uh, uh, poor, uh, There's no time oh. for indecision when driving. Those kids know them. They learnt them before they passed the test. But don't despair. Pop into your nearest bookstore and get this the new traffic signs, for the safety of you and your passengers. Keep up with the kids. You know what happened to the dinosaur, don't you? It became extinct. Many country folks still depend on springs and streams for water, both for themselves and for their animals. Surface water, too, is easily contaminated, especially by digging latrines in the wrong places. Down mountain stream and leafy brook, the water from the hills wends its way into the reservoirs that supply our cities, towns and villages. These open stretches of water lure us all in one way or another. On some reservoirs, these activities are acceptable, but there are some where bathing, boating and the weekly wash are strictly forbidden. The fact that water is part of a natural cycle leads many people to suppose that it has no value. Water is precious, whether from a stream, spring or reservoir, whether for human consumption or for animals. Follow the country code and safeguard all water supplies. It's ever so nice and peaceful up here, Joe. Nice view, too. Ah, very nice, Petunia. And look at that nice little boat. He's having a lot of fun out there in his little dinghy. That's what they call them, you know, sailing dinghies. Are they nice people at our hotel, Joe? 
<laughs> Hello. Now he's splicing his main brakes. <laughs> Though I don't think the man on table number six is very nice. Hey, do you think he's in trouble, Petunia? Oh, no, Joe. He's just enjoying himself on holiday. Oh, he's decided to have a swim. Now he's going to climb back again. I expect that water's a bit cold, don't you? Oh, oh, he's changed his mind. Now he's waving to us. Go away! I can't say I recognise him, though. Well, he must know us. Maybe it's the gent on table number six. No, it's not him. He's much... Oh, now he's shouting. A lovely day, isn't it? Help! Help! Go my my mine and ask for the Coast Guard! I can't hear a word he's saying, you know. Help. Dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. <laughs> Well, I never. If you see a boat you think may be in distress, dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. Once upon a time, there was a pond covered with ice. The children who played on it were perfectly safe so long as they followed three simple rules. One, take an adult with you. Two, wait till he's tested the ice. Three, keep away from the center where the ice is thinnest. As for the children who didn't follow these three rules, some of them were never heard of again. So the good children who were left made very certain that there was always a grown-up with them, that he tested the ice first, that they kept near the shore. And as a result, they lived happily ever after. Here's one of those pelican crossings. What? It's all right, it's all right. They're very much like ordinary traffic signals. Green, amber, red. We have to stop. Oh, the amber's flashing. What's it mean? Well, flashing amber means pedestrians have right of way, you see, and we must wait for them to cross. Oh, well, they've crossed now. Can we drive on? Yes. When the amber is flashing and the crossing is clear, we can go. Now tell me again, what's the sequence of lights after the green for go? Right. Steady amber, then red. Both mean stop, of course. Uh -huh. Flashing amber means pedestrians have right of way. But we can go if the crossing is clear. Green means go. This is a pedestrian light controlled crossing, the Pelican Crossing. To cross the road, you press the button and wait. Wait until the red man changes to the green man. See? Yes. Now, if all is clear, we can cross. There we are. <laughs> oh dear, I've left my brolly behind. I'll get it, Grandad. No, stop. The green man is flashing. Yes, that means the lights are about to change. Ooh. So you mustn't start to cross. Oh, I see. That's a good girl. Now, remember, you have to wait until the red man changes to green. Then, if all's clear, cross. Oh. Don't forget, when the green man flashes, it's too late to step out. There. Oh, it's started to rain. Wish I'd brought my brother. This is Mummy. If ever I go out of the house and forget to tell her, she gets very upset. Yesterday, Colin and Susan came past and said they were going for a picnic with Auntie Jane. And I said, could I come too? And they said yes. But I couldn't tell Mummy because she was on the telephone. And when I came out, Colin and Susan were gone. When Mummy heard that I hadn't gone off without telling her, she was very pleased and she promised me a picnic with her and Daddy as a reward. So, boys and girls, always tell Mummy where you are, even if you're going with someone you know. Always, always tell her where you are. 
This is my brother George. This is Mummy. She is always telling us we must never talk to strangers, no matter how nice they are. The other day, George was waiting for Mummy when a man came up and offered him a sweet. George shook his head. Then the man said, Would you like to come for a walk or a ride in my car? But then George remembered what Mummy had said and hurried off to find her. Mummy was very pleased with him and she said he was a very good boy. So, children, if someone you don't know offers you something, always refuse. Never, ever talk to strangers. <laughs> When you've come home from work and decided you're very tired, ready for bed, think safe, tidy up at night, settle the coals, put the guard in front of the fire, empty the ashtrays. If clothes are airing near a boiler, remove them. And any oil heaters should be turned off. Take out electric plugs, especially heaters and electric irons not forgetting the TV set. All these are sources of danger, especially at night. Don't gamble with lives and property. You're bound to lose in the end. So when you're ready for bed, think. This is the time of year for frost. Don't be caught out. Frozen pipes can be avoided. So make sure your house is really frostproof. When there's a likelihood of fog about, don't turn it into smog by burning rubbish or banking up fires at night. <laughs> you can help by using only smokeless fuel in <laughs> foggy weather. When there's fog about, that's a nuisance. But if it mixes with smoke and becomes smog, that's dangerous. Smog attacks clothes, buildings, people. Please help prevent it. Reduce the load on industrial furnaces and burn your rubbish some other time. Keep a stock of smokeless fuel or use gas or electric fires if you have them. Prevent smoke, prevent smog. You are now 15 years old. You're beginning to be aware of many things. In particular, the prospects in life before you. Are you going to leave it all to the hand of chance and just let yourself be landed into the first job that comes along? Don't be soft. Stand up for yourself. Think of what you really want to do and go after it. What's up? Not clear about the way? Do you remember you had a talk from someone about the different kinds of jobs there are? He's the man to look for now. You can be sure of making a start in the right direction with help from your careers teacher and the local careers officer. All paraffin heaters, no matter what kind, need a continuous flow of air to prevent poisonous fumes from building up. So keep a window or ventilator open. This is a Coast Guard station, where a Coast Guard keeps watch for craft in difficulties at sea. Now just here, there could be a boat in distress. And this could be you, seeing it all happen. So what should you do? Make for the nearest telephone, dial, and ask for the Coast Guard. He's at the centre of the rescue organisation, in touch by telephone and radio with lifeboats and helicopters. So remember, for distress at sea, dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. I am a Coast Guard. I guard coasts and yachtsmen like Edwin here. Sensibly, before sailing, Edwin is giving a friend details of his boat, where he's going, and when he will be back. 
Now all goes well with Edwin until he reaches here. When a storm blows up. Edwin quickly makes for the nearest shelter. He decides to stay a while, but forgets to let anyone know his change of plan. So that later, his friend phones me to tell me Edwin is hours overdue here. After getting full details, we organize search and rescue operations all along his supposed course. What a waste of time and money. So do help us, yachtsman. Always tell somebody of your sailing plans. But don't forget to let them know if you change them. Seen something interesting, Joe? Uh, no, not really, Petunia. Well, you must have spotted something. Uh, well, it's uh, what you might call a, a rare sea bird. Oh, fancy. How nice. I uh, think I might go for a little swim, Petunia. <gasps> not here, Joe. A red notice means it's permanently unsafe and you must never, never bathe from here. Oh. That water looks very inviting, Petunia. You can't bathe from here either. Not now. Can't you see the red flag? It means it's just not safe. But I can swim like a fish. That's no excuse, Joe. As long as the red flag's flying, you must go in the water. Oh. Now you're in luck. Red and yellow flags. That means the area between them is patrolled by lifeguards. Now in you go, Joe. Funny, but I've, I've changed my mind, Petunia. Oh, men. You know, when I was at home, stuck at the old sink, I used to dream about going out to work again and all the different jobs I could do. But when the time came and I did get the chance, I didn't know how to start or where to go. Then one day, on my way to the shops, I was given a government leaflet. It told me all about getting a job again and the tax and about training for things. All of which proved so interesting to my neighbours and friends that I shall now have to get another one from my local employment exchange. A year or so ago, Mr and Mrs Arnold Finney lined their kitchen ceiling with polystyrene tiles. How nice, how safe too, until they added a fine coat of gloss paint. How dangerous. Moral, polystyrene tiles are safe. Gloss paint is safe. But together, they are a very serious fire hazard. If a man with dangerous animals to feed went about it like this, you would not be surprised at the results then why on earth, when it's foggy, do you drive down the motorway like this, straight into situations you can't see? <laughs> After all, it may not be just your neck. Oh, Joe, I have enjoyed our country walk. Yes, we've come a long way, Petunia. Look, you can see our tracks right across that yellow cornfield. Oh, yes. It's ever so nice in this field, but I'm glad those cows have gone. Ah, they're taking themselves off for a walk down the road. Look, through that gate I opened. The one mark private. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 oh. Our little bingo's having a lovely time playing with those sheep. The exercise will do him good. <laughs> hey, I've hit that bottle, Petunia. <laughs> it smashed up a treat. Oh, very clever. You know, there's a farmer down there with a purple face. I expect it's all that sun in the open air life, Joe. Now he's doing one of those country dances. Well, I don't think he looks very friendly. Oh, maybe you're right. That can't be anything we've done. No, but I won't stay where I'm not wanted. Come on, Joe. When folk come out to the country, why, oh, why won't they follow the country code? To you, it's just a worn-out fridge. But to a child, it's a caravan, a ship, a castle, even a bed. And a death trap, airtight and impossible to open from the inside. 
Don't let an old fridge be a new danger to children. Take off the door or smash the lock or better still, ask your local council to take it away or tell you how to dispose of it before it kills a child. What's up with you? I'm trying to do some grinding. Oh, the guard. Well, all right. You're a bit of a mess. A wheel burst did it. Well, you can still hear with the other one, can't you? Yes, it's safe now. What now? Oh, your hands got pulled in by the wheel, did they? Serves you right. You should have shoved the rest up close to the wheel, like this. A one-eighth inch gap. Here, leave me alone. I want to get on. Oh, I can't understand. Oh, the goggles. Well, all right. But what's all the fuss? I've never known anyone hurt by one of these. This is me, thinking as usual about Dave. Dave is super. Dave can do anything. Oh, he's great. He really is. When pow, up pops my fairy godmother with a I'll give you three wishes routine. Wish number one is easy. Next, I wish we were both at the seaside. Come on, Dave, let's swim, I say. It's just not my scene, man, says Dave. What he really meant was he couldn't swim. <whistles> I've still got one wish left, remember? Meet Mike. He Hello. swims like a fish. <whistles> yes, I wish. I wish I didn't keep losing me birds. Then learn to swim, young man. Learn to swim. If you can't swim, ask about lessons at your local swimming baths. Do learn to swim. It could save your life. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A short demonstration of lifting heavy objects without strain. Feet about a foot apart, knees bent, straight back and down like so. And now, the wrong way. Straight legs and bent back. Concalls, injury, no calls, injury, no calls, injury. When he left school, Dennis Trout, like most of all, to clown about. But on factory floor, the tricks of Dennis to his mates became a menace. For instance, a compressed air hose, a useful tool, but deadly handled by a fool. But metal filings in the eye can very often blind a guy. To throw a rag may seem fun, yet cause a mate to crush a thumb. So on factory floor, don't be a burk. Keep your tricks for after work. This chap is a fiddler. Uh, no, not that kind. Let me explain. This is a machine, quite harmless when operated by a trained operator. Oh, most impressive. Thank you, sir. Now, the fiddler has not been told or taught to use the machine, but he's going to fiddle. Fiddle with this, fiddle with that, and... Oh, dear! So, at work, don't fiddle with machinery you haven't been trained to use. Charlie says that if ever you see a box of matches lying around, tell Mummy because they can hurt you. One day when my dad went fishing, he took Charlie and me along. While he was fishing, we started having fun with the puddles. <laughs> Shouted, come back here, but just then Charlie tried to do an extra big jump and he went over the edge and into the water. <laughs>
Charlie says next time we go fishing, we should stay very close to Dad where he can look after us. And he hopes that when you go near the water, you'll stay close to a grown-up too. Charlie says that stoves are dangerous to go close to because there are so many hot things there that can hurt you. because the hot water from the teapot hurt him very much. <laughs> Charlie and I were in the park. <laughs> then this man came up and said, would I like to see some puppies? And I said yes. And I was going to go, but Charlie stopped me. <coughs> Charlie's reminded me, my mum says I shouldn't go off with people I don't know. Then the man went away. We went and told mummy, and she said we'd been very good. I got an apple and Charlie got something he likes. He says never go anywhere with men or ladies you don't know. Charlie and I were out the back when Vera and Dave came by and said, come along for a picnic. And I was going, but Charlie said, he says I better tell Mum where I'm going. So we told him to wait while we went and asked. But Mum was talking to the milkman. And she talked such a long time that when I had asked her and she'd said yes, the others had gone. <laughs> Mum asked us why we hadn't gone and when I told her, she said we'd been good for not going and would you like a day out with her instead? <laughs> Charlie says, always tell your mummy before you go off somewhere so she knows who you are with. Mrs Fluffytail is taking Tufty and Bobby to the shops. Tufty, what's the right way to cross the road? First, find a safe place where we can see both ways. No parked cars. Stop. Then stand on the pavement near the curb and look all round for traffic. And listen. I hear a noise, says Bobby. When the lorry has gone, they all look round and listen again. All the traffic has gone now, so we walk straight across, looking and listening all the time. But always with Mummy, says Mrs Fluffytail. My Mrs Cunningen and Minda Tufti are Bobby your shop. Tufti sit my crazy for the yawn. 
Edrych am ledi o gael lle gallwn ni weld bob ffordd dim cair wedi parcio. Stop. Wedyn, sefyll ar y palmant yn agos i'r ymyl ac edrych o gwmpas am draffig a gwrando. Rwy'n clywed sŵn, meddai Bobby. Mae'r traffig i gyd wedi mynd nawr, felly fe allwn gyrdded ar draws y ffordd ac edrych a gwrando drwy'r amser. Ond gyda mami bob amser, meddai Mrs. Cunningen. This is what happened one day when the ice cream van stopped by Tufty's house. Ice cream! And Tufty goes to find his mummy. Tufty always asks his mummy to go with him to the ice cream van. But Willie Weasel has gone off to get an ice cream by himself. Oh, dear! Oh, mummy! Willie has been knocked down by a car. Now Willie has been hurt. And all because he didn't ask his mummy to go with him to the ice cream van. When you want to go to the ice cream van, always take mummy with you. Tufty and Bobby Brown Rabbit are playing football with Tufty's new ball. Bobby is taking a kick. Oh! What happened to their ball? Oh dear. It's gone out onto the road. Bobby, what shall we do? We mustn't go onto the road to get it back because of the traffic. Look at the ball. Just think what might have happened to Tufty or Bobby if they had run into the road. Mrs. Fluffytail has seen it all and is very pleased with them because they didn't run into the road to get the ball. One fine day, Tufty is playing on the grass with Bobby Brown Rabbit. But Harry Hare and Willie Weasel are playing out by the road, near the cars and buses. Poor Willie. The car has knocked him down. Very luckily, Mr. Policeman Badger comes along to help. Oh, my word, says Policeman Badger. You are both silly boys to play in the road. Now Willie's been hurt. He won't be able to play with you for a long time. Never play near the road. Tufty loves going to the shops with his mummy. Mrs. Fluffytail is buying some fruit. But Tufty wants to look in the toy shop window. He wants to look at the toys so much that he forgets about his mummy. But he can't cross the road without her. And now he doesn't know where she is. Suddenly, his mummy is there. Oh, Tufty, always keep tight hold of mummy's hand when we go shopping. Tufty holds his mummy's hand and feels safe again. Uh, nice view from up here, Petunia. Yes, very nice, Joe. Worn tyres kill. Worn tyres kill? Are our tyres worn, Joe? Yeah, oh, I wouldn't think so, Petunia. Well, I expect you've looked. You have looked, haven't you, Joe? Joe, have you looked at our tyres? Uh, yes. Uh, Recently, Joe. <laughs> nice view from up here, Petunia. Joe, are our tyres worn? We're not worn, Petunia. They're a bit smooth. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> nice view from up here, Petunia. Yes, very nice, too. Hey, Dad, you know the traffic lights at the top? Mm. You know if you want to go straight on, the offside lane's favourite? Is it? Well, today, the other lane cleared first. Oh, yes. Well, in a case like that, is it all right to switch lanes? <laughs> Not if something's coming up in the other lane, it isn't. Oh. Well, I won't do it again, Dad. Not in your car, anyway. Yeah. I'm off to the Himalayas, Dad! When approaching lights, pick your lane early and stick to it. 
Well, here we are, waiting for the start of the greatest baby walker rally of the year. The flag's up, and they're off! And right at the start, number one crashes into the safety barrier at Fireguard Bend. And now, number three is in the lead. But was this a disaster? A disaster for number three as he short circuits at Kettlefleck's corner. I, I think, yes, yes, he's all right, he's all right. And that leaves number two and, yes, number four. This is sensational. Number two, number two has misjudged the doorstep chicane. And he's out of the race as well, which gives the race to number four. But what a finish! Baby walkers are perfectly safe when supervised. But a baby left alone in one could burn or scold himself. So watch your baby all the time or he'll never grow up to be a world champion. Jeremy's got a roaring toothache again. I'm not surprised. He eats too many sweets and never cleans his teeth. Oh, tut, tut, you'll have to go to the dentist. Poor Jeremy. His mum should have taught him to clean his teeth every day. They could have been as nice and clean as mine. Look! <laughs> Have a crocodile smile. Clean your teeth every day. Claude goes to the seaside. A cautionary tale for caravanners. There, I think I've got everything in. Hey, <laughs> I'm looking forward to our holiday, aren't you, dear? Yes, dear. Just a moment. With all this weight at the back, I'm not safe to be taken anywhere. Yeah, oh, do stop pushing, Claude. You mark my words. Stop! <laughs> That's done it. The whole lot shifted up front. You'll never manage now. Hey, hold your head up, Claude. You're making it very hard to steer. Oi, there's a speed limit for caravan, you know. All right, all right. Don't panic. I'm putting the brakes on. Help! Hey, put that in, Claude. It's not my fault. I told you we were overloaded. <whistles> Next time you take a caravan on holiday, please don't overload it and keep within the speed limit. Green Cross man in Tony gets it right. Hey, Tony! Good. He's using the Green Cross code. Stop. Look. Listen for traffic. When there's no traffic near, walk straight across, looking and listening all the time. That was great. Always use the Green Cross code, because I won't be there when you cross the road. Always stop. Look. Listen. Think. Who can it be? Perhaps. It's your rich Aunt Annie who you love to see outside the front door. Or your loving husband who has lost his key outside the front door. Now I wonder who it is going to be outside the front door. But stop. On the other hand, could it be that? There's a real con con man who will take you in outside the front door. Or a mad bad axeman who is deep in sin outside the front door. So put the chain on the door before you let them in through the front door. So put the chain on the door before you let them in through the front door. See who's there first before you open the door. Put the chain on. This sign does not mean that you will encounter flying motorcycles. No, this sign indicates a street down which it is illegal to drive a motor vehicle or you may be liable to a fine. I used to have a terrible time with my headlights. I found they gave a lot of trouble to people I overtook and traffic and pedestrians coming towards me. Their effect was quite devastating. So I called in my doctor, Gus, the noted brain surgeon. He said there was nothing wrong with the adjustment, and then he gave me a switch that makes my lights more manageable. He calls it a dip switch. Now, when I go out at night, I'm no trouble to anyone. My friends who have cars tell me they have dip switches too. I'm fed up. Being a gas means you want to keep moving. But in these cylinders, there's no room to expand at all. And anyway, in a mobile heater, the most you can hope for is a short trip up the tube to 
the heady excitement of being a controlled flame. We do get out sometimes, you know. And in fact, yeah, there's a leak. Now's my chance. <sighs> Time to build up a nice surprise. Here we go. Take care with the gas in your heater. It is very dangerous to cross the road near a zebra crossing. The zigzags mark the danger zone. Unfortunately, some people still forget. So please use the crossing, not the zigzag zone. This is every mother's nightmare. You've left your baby for just a moment. While you're gone, the baby starts to rock. The pram tips. Don't let the nightmare come true. If you must leave your baby, always strap him in with care. Never hang bags from the handles. Use a properly fitted shopping basket on your pram or pushchair. Take care. Don't let the nightmare come true. Yeah, I say, they should warn you about slippery roads like this. Yes, a beware sign, a red triangle. Beware crossroads, beware bends, beware cattle. And they should warn you when there's no overtaking. Yes, a no sign, a red circle. No U-turns, no motor vehicles, no stopping. Mind you, if they did put out these signs, you can bet your life some idiot still wouldn't take a blind bit of notice. If you must make a journey when it's snowing, clear snow from all windows and lights. Keep windscreens clean and use screen heater and demister. Use dipped headlights or fog lights. If necessary, stop and clean windows. If you really have to drive in snow, make sure you can see and others can see you. It was getting dark before they found him, sir. The body was caught under the ice, you see. Well, his mother said he'd gone off to the pond with the others and she thought they'd be safe on their own. It wasn't that far away. It seems he was sliding out further than the others and the ice wasn't as thick there. What's that, sir? Oh, no. No, she said she never dreamed it was that dangerous. Frozen ponds can be dangerous. Always make sure you supervise children. Test the ice before they play on it and make certain they stay close to the shore. So that you will not think that I'm limiting your fun unreasonably, Roderick, I shall show you how there is a risk involved in using airbeds on the sea. In the first place, the airbed is not a boat and cannot easily be controlled. Wind, current or tide can rapidly carry you away from the beach and out to sea. You will then have no means of getting back. If then you should fall off, you will have to try and swim after it. You will find it very difficult to regain. Ma'am? Never use an airbed where wind, waves and tides can take it and you into danger. Don't dazzle. Dip your headlights. Well, here we are in Oak Apple Road to see Augustus Winsock, the oldest living cyclist in the world, overtaking a parked vehicle. What a superb opportunity this is for all young cyclists to see the master in action. What elbows. What knees. And now, as he approaches, he looks back to check on traffic behind him. He makes a signal. Nothing sloppy there, absolutely clear to anything coming behind. And now he moves out so he can see ahead, slows up to let traffic go by, and now smartly past the vehicle and tucked in again close to the curb. When you see an action like that so gracefully, so correctly performed, you understand just why he stayed alive so long. <laughs> Find a place. 
Space invaders on the road, and you play a dangerous game. Between every car is a safety space. Invade it at your peril. But remember, the safety space you need is always longer than you think. At 30 miles per hour, it is at least 75 feet. Invade it and put yourself at risk. The vehicle ahead is already in the braking mode. The safety space is shrinking fast, and the game is already lost. Don't be a space invader. Stay out of the safety space. It's one game you can't win, Earthling. You know sometimes I do get awfully fed up with you lot. I'm always happy to help you when you want to swim. I give you lots of fish to catch. I even leave you things to play with when I'm not around. But then some of you start taking me for granted. You know I have my bad moods and yet you ignore all the warning signs. Then you shout for help when my undercurrent carries you away. Or when a wave sweeps you off. Or when you get cut off as I come rushing back with the tide. I can't help the way I'm made. You know what I'm like. The sea can take you by surprise. So never ignore any warning signs. <sighs> Johnny was a fool, he didn't act cool He walked on out, he broke every rule He should've stopped looking, listen, should've used his head If he don't watch out, he's gonna wind up dead Now don't step out when you're close to the edge Or you may find that you'll lose your head When you're out on the street, trying to cross the road You gotta try to remember your green cross code You gotta stop at the edge, you know you gotta take care You gotta stop looking, listen, cause there's danger everywhere Now don't step out when you're close to the edge Stop, look, listen, think And you won't lose your head Always stop and think before you cross These are the parts of the world where malaria is common and where a traveler runs the risk of a bite from infected mosquitoes. Even if you once lived in one of these countries, you may have lost any immunity after only a few years away. And children born in Britain won't be immune at all. So, before traveling to hot countries, ask your doctor about anti-malarial tablets. Beware malaria. If you're bitten or scratched or even licked by any animal when you're abroad, take no chances. It could have rabies. Wash the wound immediately and then get urgent medical aid. If you wait until the symptoms of rabies appear, you've left it too late. Rabies kills. This new label, which I am proud to wear, has been awarded to me in recognition of my resistance to the dangers of cigarettes and matches. The citation reads, meets the requirements for resistance to cigarette and match ignition in the upholstered furniture safety regulations. Not all furniture is entitled to wear it. When you're buying furniture, look for the labels which tell you how resistant it is to fire. Now, as any experienced sailor will tell you, there are many hazards awaiting the unwary. But even in a small boat, you should be perfectly safe if you know what you're doing and you carry the proper safety equipment. You should have a life jacket and safety harness for everyone on board, life buoy and buoyant line, bailer, anchor, oars or paddles, and a set of flares for use in distress only. Idiot. Oh, and don't forget the fire extinguisher. Of course, it goes without saying that you should know how to use them all. After all, you never know what you might encounter at sea. Always remember to check your safety equipment before leaving harbour. To prepare dinner for a seagull, take one small boat, place in it some sandwiches and more people than it should hold. 
making sure, if possible, that they are the kind without life jackets. Then send them a mile or so offshore. After a short wait, the ingredients will react as expected. And dinner is ready. A warning may come quite unexpectedly. We will now tell you what to do if a warning sounds when you are at home. And then we will explain what to do if you are out of doors. First, if you are at home. If attack is imminent, you will hear the attack sound like this. So take cover at once. Send your young children to the fallout room, then go quickly and turn off the gas and the electricity at the mains. Close down stoves. Damp down fires. Shut windows. And draw curtains. Then go to your fallout room and stay there. If the fallout warning sounds are heard, they will be like these. You should now move yourself and your family to the safest area in your fallout room. That is, you should get inside your inner refuge and stay there. After two days, the danger from fallout will get less, but don't take any risks by contact with it. The longer you stay in your refuge, the better it will be for you. Listen to your radio. Stay where you are and keep listening to your radio. Now, this is what you should do if you are out of doors when the warning sounds. Take cover at once when you hear the attack sound. If you cannot reach home in 10 minutes, Take cover in the nearest building. If there is no building nearby, try to find some solid cover. If there is no solid cover, lie flat in a ditch or a hole and cover your head, face and hands as fast as you can with some of your clothes. If you hear the fallout warning, seek the nearest and best cover as quickly as you can. But before entering the building or cover, brush or shake off any fallout dust you may have picked up and get rid of it. Change your outer clothing if you can. Stay under cover. When the all clear sounds, like this, it means that you are safe from attack or fallout for the time being and that you can go out again. But keep listening for further warnings or to your radio for further advice. After an attack is over and the all clear has been sounded, arrangements will be made as soon as possible to treat any people who are ill or injured. 
listen to your radio. Details will be given about what to do, when to do it, and how. If anyone dies while you are kept in your fallout room, move the body to another room in the house. Label the body with name and address and cover it as tightly as possible in polythene, paper, sheets or blankets. Tie a second card to the covering. The radio will advise you what to do about taking the body away for burial. If, however, you have had a body in the house for more than five days, and if it is safe to go outside, then you should bury the body for the time being in a trench or cover it with earth and mark the spot of the burial. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like... I see, Mr. Roy, what have you got there, Roy? It's an inflatable canoe. I'm blowing it up. Blowing it up? What harm has it done you? Put it down. <laughs> Put it blowing down. air into it, you nut. Oh, I pick it ever so pudding. <laughs> it's a bit small for you, isn't it? It's yours. Huh? I thought you might fancy a jolly joust with the waves. <laughs> jolly j a j You're not getting me out in that. Oh, I get salt in me fur. Hmm? And the waves, I mean to say, sit me up, turn me over. You'll get your tail wet. Brush, please. Do you mind? Brush. All right, well, if you're staying here, I'm going to borrow a rubber dinghy. Yeah? And if I get beyond the waves... Beyond the waves? I can have a nice a swim. A nice swim? You really... Uh, uh, lifeguard! Lifeguard! Li uh, what's the matter? If you swim away from a rubber dinghy, it could be swept away from you. Oh, I see. And there I'll be. Where? All at sea. Boom, boom. Can I do the jukes? All right, then. I'll go and have a nice peaceful float on my airbed. Just a minute. Hang me about. What? I'll tell you something. Yeah. Imagine, there I am, lying on my airbed, floating gently up and down. Suddenly, I raise my head. And what do you see? That's right. What? The sea. <laughs> boom, boom. That's my joke. You can have it. It wasn't very funny anyway. <laughs> Water. No beach. The wind and tide have carried me out. Help! Help! Are you help. trying to tell me that inflatables are dangerous? You're dangerous? Now, did I say that? Now, did I say... Ah, you mean inflatables are safe if they're used properly. Go to the top of the class. But don't go out on open water when the wind and tide can sweep you out. And don't be tempted to go for a nice swim. Wait, wait who's giving this information? That's right. And don't go out where there are waves to tip you up. So what are you going to do, then? I thought I might potter over to the paddling pool and play with Horace. Who's Horace? My rubber duck. <laughs> Come on, Horace! 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 You can't stand water, you noob. <laughs> Those of you who can't swim yet, then if you just wait over in the shallow for me. Kids and water, they love it. Rivers, canals, even the lily pond in the garden. You can't keep them away from it. Water has a fascination for children. And I should know, when I was three years old, I fell in the river at our place, couldn't swim, somehow managed to scrabble my way to the bank, frightened the wits out of my mum and dad. And you can bet they had me taught to swim very soon after that. But some children aren't quite so lucky. And if they can't swim and they go off by themselves to play by the side of some water somewhere, you know only too well what might happen. That's why I had my little girl taught to swim as soon as possible. So have your children taught to swim. They're never too young to start, and once they get that confidence in the water, they love it. Ask at your local swimming pool, all right? Or if you can swim yourself, why not teach them yourself? It's fun. See. When you fly your kite or model plane, remember you're in charge of a flying machine. Pilots have to observe safety rules. So must you. Make sure there are no pylons, overhead lines, or electric substations around. Control lines, even if made of string or nylon, can conduct electricity, especially when they're wet. Watch out! Delta Zero Bravo, you are clear to take off. Always make sure you're in a clear area to take off. 
then you'll fly safe and play safe. Enemy number one, hunted all over the world. Messy job. Call on LDV, litter defense volunteers. Spotless, clean, tidy. With good humor, they strike against public enemy number one wherever he operates. Litter costs you money. Litter defense volunteers stop litter, save the cost of picking it up. With more public help, they'd do even better. Keep litter to yourself. Put it here. Britain is a beautiful country, not a litter bin. Keep Britain tidy. Last place in the world to leave a bottle is a beach. Lovely animals, aren't they? Isn't it a shame that diseases like foul pests, swine fever, and foot and mouth can decimate the nation's livestock? In one foot and mouth epidemic, we slaughtered and destroyed over 200,000 cattle, 100,000 sheep, and 113,000 pigs. Now, one of the main risks to animals is uncooked food and scraps getting into their feed. On the farm, we boil it all, but that's a specialised job. When you get uncooked scraps like these, you should dispose of them safely, like this. And never let them get to farm animals. Isn't that right? <coughs> supposed to go in there. Oh, go on. There's a gap down there. A gang of kids broke in yesterday. I saw them. Pass me that bit of wood. shock killed a boy today when he broke into a substation. The electricity board warns children to keep away from substations. Never try to get toys back yourself, otherwise you may not live to play with them again. And Great Britain is going to win its first gold medal in swimming since 1960, and it's Wilkie! And it's a new world record for David Wilkie. What a swim! Stay almost a bit higher. Fingers together. I was lucky. I learned to swim when I was three years old. So by the time I won that gold medal at the Montreal Olympics, I'd been swimming for nearly 20 years. But some kids never manage to learn, and they just grow up thinking that they can't swim. Josephine, why did you learn to swim? Well, I felt I had to, really. Everybody else was swimming, and I wanted to. Philip, why did you start swimming? Uh, because it was important and it could save your life one time if you fell in the river or something. Were you not scared of the water to start with? Yes, I was. And how did you overcome that fear? Well, I just had to pluck courage up. Well, there's nothing to fear because the water is just normal and once you get in there, you feel great. 
And if you had a friend that couldn't swim, how would you tell him to go about learning to swim? Uh, go to a learn to swim class, because it could save their life sometime. Not being able to swim often means you miss out on a lot of fun with your friends. So if you'd like to learn, but you think it's too late, or you think you're just one of those people who'll never learn, go along to your local swimming bus and ask them about lessons. They'll teach you quickly and safely, and even though you don't make the next Olympics, you'll have a lot of fun. It's great fun, you know, to be able to swim. Can you imagine being frightened of every friendly animal you meet? Imagine rabies in Britain. All dogs will be leashed and muzzled. Foxes will be destroyed. Wildlife at risk. No animal may be moved in or out of the infected area. All cats will be restrained. Just one animal smuggled in could lead to all this. So if you suspect anyone of smuggling, tell the police. If rabies breaks out, any animal found loose will be seized, taken away, and if it is not claimed, destroyed. Rabies is a killer. We must keep rabies out. Attention! This is an official announcement. An outbreak of foot and mouth has been confirmed for this area. So take immediate precautions to stop it spreading to your stock. In particular, close off all entrances to your farm except the main one, across which you should lay a straw mat. Apply fresh disinfectant to it daily, provide facilities for disinfecting boots and vehicles, and keep all unnecessary visitors away. If you see any symptoms of foot and mouth in your stock, frothing, lameness, or anything unusual, take no chances. Phone us immediately. And please, everyone, keep away from farms. These are not telephone wires. They're overhead power lines carrying high voltages. Without them, lots of people wouldn't have any electricity. So when you go out to enjoy yourself, Play safe and make sure there are no overhead lines about. Watch out! Oh, God. Those wires are alive! If you want to have fun and stay alive, keep away from overhead power lines. Then you know you'll be playing safe. This is an emergency. Day and night, the ambulances are bringing the sick and badly injured to the hospitals. It's my finger. I'm afraid you'll have to wait. The patient's heart begins to falter. Cardiac arrest. This is an emergency. Actually, I don't think I pulled a muscle. This is an emergency. If the heart team can get there in time, they can save a life. Excuse me. I'm afraid you'll have to wait. Anyone who goes to an emergency department will be seen. But the real emergencies come first. And you may have to wait. So contact your own doctor first. Oh, I'm terribly sorry I'm late. I know I had to wait hours for the bus. I am sorry. Oh, that's all right, Glenda. Oh, I'm so glad you could come along and star in my latest film. Is this a film what you wrote? Well, not exactly. Oh, what's it about? Blood. Blood? Oh, no, no, I can't. 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, I can't. I can't. No, it's the, the needle. Is that what you're afraid of? Please, is a friend. Don't ask me to do this. I can't. The needle. I can't. No, I'm not. No, 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 don't no, make me do this. Please, don't make me do this. Please, you're overacting. Please. How dare you? I am not overacting. No, really? Meet Miss Jackson. She's volunteered to give blood. Sit down, Glenda. You told me you'd take me to Hollywood. No, Cricklewood. Oh. So do I sign this now? I think it's very nice of you, Glenda, and I... I think it's very nice of me. Can we talk about this? No, come on. Thank you very much. She's just going to test my blood now. I see. Mm. There you are. Is that all you give? No, no, that's just the start. That's oh, just to see, see if your iron level is okay. Oh, I see. All right. Thank you. Okay, now it's your turn. Another fine mess you've got me into. <laughs> now, that didn't hurt, did it? Not hurt, no. no. <laughs> Is it painful? Not at all. So you For didn't once, mean... he told me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to it, is there? Absolutely nothing at all. Because it's the first time for you, isn't it? Not the first time for you, though. The second time, actually. I give... Only the second? Oh, yes. The way you've been going on, I thought you'd got one of those silver medals or well, bronze know. hearts or whatever they get. Well, it was just show business talk. <laughs> you came on the bus, didn't you? Oh, well... you were too mean to send a car. I'll give you the bus fare later. 27p. Will you take a check? <laughs> <laughs> I take back everything I said. It's extremely easy, totally painless. I haven't felt this virtuous in a long time. Glenda, just because you're a blood donor, there's no need to make a production out of it. Oh, all right. Let's go and have some biscuits and tea urn. Right. Tea urn? Tea urn? Tea urn? I asked you not to do that. Some of you mad. That fat friend, this boy's a fool. Yeah. What do you think of it? Hello. Yes, you might know I've got a little daughter, and this is her, Francesca. Hello. <laughs> well, being a parent isn't all fun and games. They tell me I'm going through the uh, easy part at the moment. <laughs> they must be joking. You see, when she gets older, that's when I'm going to have to start trotting out all those stories about talking to strangers. Well, it's all very well. She can't be expected to know who the bad guys are because she'll take kindly to any adult that's kind to her. So, you have to tell her things like not to talk to strangers, that somebody who gives you a sweet is not bound to be a nice person, and of course, smart girls don't accept lifts in strange cars, do they? And of course, she must tell you where she's going, and you must tell her when she's going to get back. But it's not only little girls that oh. must know these things, is it? It's little boys as well. If I have sons, I'll be telling them the same things. So our children must learn to look after themselves, and we must tell them how to steer clear of the villain. Francesca, Francesca, say bye. Why do they do it? Well, I know what I'd like to do to them. If they see anything nice, anything decent. They just have to spoil it. It's the same in the park. They've knocked out all the lampposts. And who pays out? We do. Well, what's them doing it? Oh. Do you say anything? What's the point? Kids do as they please. Well, look at the state of the new underpass. Well, what about the bus shelter? Oh, and how long has that been up? About a week. Is that? Oh, the police ought to do something. It's the parents, isn't it? Well, we're parents and our children don't go around vandalising. Well, we hope they don't. But we don't always know where they are, not all the time, do we? If I thought one of mine was behaving I like think this, it's the I'd... schools. Oh, it makes me so oh. angry. Try telling them off. They're laughing your face. You certainly can't reason with them. Right. So there's nothing we can do about it. Well, I, I just don't believe it. There is something you can do. Ring the police immediately. You need not give your name, but dial 999. You might save someone's property. You could save someone's life. Judy, I thought the faucets were away. They are, to the end of the month. Well, they've got visitors. Must have come back unexpected. If something doesn't look right, tell the police. Hundreds of cars are stolen every day. If you're suspicious, note the number and tell the police. If there's something funny going on, dial 999. There are many hundreds of calls every 24 hours. Everyone is investigated. Often there's nothing to it, but sometimes you save a neighbor an awful lot of trouble.
the police don't mind how many calls they get, and remember, the next call might be about your house. That was a game and a half, wasn't it, Fred? Yeah, but we should have had it sewn up by half time. What we need is a bit more skill up front. Hey, how are you getting home? Bus? No, I've got the new car with me. New, eh? <laughs> you must be doing all right. Well, it's in fantastic nick, though. Only 10,000 on the clock. It goes like a bomb. Yeah? I'll tell you what, I'll give you a lift home. Thanks. We can hear the football results on the radio. Only just round the corner. You can't miss it, it's white. That's funny. I could have sworn I left it here. Remember, lock your car. Check the doors, the windows, the boot. And please, take the keys with you. Watch out. There's a thief about. Do you know where your lad's going tonight? Children, always so trusting, happy, unafraid. What a pity to have to remind them about the darker side of life, but it must be done. Remind them of danger, danger from going with strangers, especially strangers in cars, enticing children to get in with plausible stories. Would you like to get in my car? Mummy sent me to fetch you. You naughty, naughty, naughty man, I don't believe you. Take that, and that, and that. No then, no then. Always remind your children about the danger from strangers, but do it in such a way as you don't frighten them. And make sure you always know where they are, any time of the day. That's the way to do it. I've got my in-laws coming today, so it's got to be something a bit special. I set the oven at 350 degrees, which is gas mark four, and on the top shelf I've got some spiced chicken, then some rice to go with it, and next door, Dad's favourite, bread and butter pudding. On the bottom shelf, some leek and potato soup, which is simmering away quite happily. Cooking everything together really does save fuel, and nowadays I think a good cook is an economical cook. Energy sense is common sense. Save it. It's surprising what you can do to save fuel, especially if you've got central heating. First, you can make sure that it's serviced regularly and working efficiently. And if the system has a time clock, you could try adjusting it to a shorter time interval. And turning down the thermostat a bit, that'll help with the fuel bills. Energy sense is common sense. Save it. Over a thousand people a year still get injured by fireworks. For parents to supervise children's activities during More than two-thirds of them are children. Do you know where your child is in the weeks up to November the 5th? Out collecting? Getting fireworks from older children? Parents. Where's your child tonight? Where's that boy? Yes, there's a TV set on at number five. It's in the front room. And they're watching Columbo. If you don't have a TV license, it won't take us long to find you. You can put almost any frail object in a box, and provided it's held firm, you can shake it about no end. But if it's loose in a box, that's another matter. A car is a box, a box on wheels, but a box just the same. And it can still get shaken about. And if you're in it and not wearing a seatbelt, you're in trouble because you're a loose object. It doesn't matter who you are or what you are, you can be the world's most experienced driver, but to the law of gravity, you're the world's most experienced loose object. And it can be very unfunny. Now, an egg hasn't got much in the way of brains, but you have. Wear a seatbelt. And if the box gets shaken up, you stand every chance of not getting broke. No matter how short the journey, nag yourself to remember this drill. Clump the car door and click the seatbelt. Clunk, click, every trip.
Here's how to remember the Green Cross Cone. First, find a safe place to cross, then stop. Stand on the pavement near the curb. Look all round for traffic and listen. If traffic is coming, let it pass. When there is no traffic near, walk straight across the road. Keep looking and listening for traffic while you cross. Straight! Well, now we'll all remember the Green Cross Code and use it. Splink! It's easy when you know how. But how many men know the correct way to lift heavy loads? This man, for instance. Now he'll be laid up for weeks, all because he didn't know how to lift the correct way. But he's only one of nearly 50,000 men who injure themselves when handling goods every year. Now for the correct way. Feet apart for good balance, Load close to the body, knees bent. Now straighten the legs and come up gradually like a human lift. It's easy when you know how. Just look at them. <laughs> they must be crackers. A double-decker bus could be right on top of them and they'd never even see it. <laughs> hey, you must be out of your tiny minds. When you cross the road, always use the green cross code. Keep your wits about you, and keep looking and listening. Great. See you, girls. Take it from me. Be smart. Be safe. You know, you should use a pedestrian crossing. You should look right, look left, look right again, and then, if all's clear, proceed with caution. Oh, thank you very much, Gaffer. I say, Chaffee, where do you think you're off to? Well, it's my crossing when I put my foot on it, and you're supposed to stop. Oh, <laughs> one of those, are you? Yes, well, I know something about this. Oh, let me see, what is it? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, you've got to look, Daddy-o, uh, like you've got to make with the people. Of course, so there. Yeah, ah, but, ah, but, ah, but, you're supposed to proceed with caution when approaching a crossing. Thank you. That's just what I was going to say. Eh? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you're not supposed to dawdle. You've got to get along. Yahoo! Quite. You see? Ha! <laughs> Come along, Mrs. Don't dawdle. Oh, what are you doing? No, young man, be frozen, please. No, what about me, please? But seriously, folks, everyone should use the crossings properly. See you. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Come back here. I tell you what. If you go on like that, you could be in big trouble. Now look, when you get to the curb, stop, okay? Make sure the road is absolutely clear. That's part of the Green Cross Code. Now let's see you do it properly. That's better. Take it from me. Be smart, be safe. A tragic, needless accident. But why did it happen? The driver checks the traffic on his right, the road seems to be clear, and he pulls out. But if we look again from the driver's angle, we can see his problem. Visibility isn't good, but if only he'd checked again, he would have seen the motorcyclist approaching. That car driver will be more careful next time. For the motorcyclist, there isn't going to be a next time. So motorists, be particularly careful at junctions. Think once, think twice, think five. Every morning the same. This bus will get her there on time, the next one five minutes late. And time seems to be so important. Hundreds of people are killed or injured each year running for buses, just to save a few minutes. It's not worth the risk. This evening, young Billy Blunders has borrowed the keys to the family car. He's looking forward to an exciting night out, and he's got every confidence in his driving ability, which is more than his dad has. 
What does he mean he's gonna put his foot down? I'll show him what putting your foot down means. Stupid. What? Hello. Meet Andros back again. Hold up. Me luck will be in here. Hello, love. Clear off. Oh, well, can't win them all. I know. I wonder what that little Karen's doing tonight. You could meet Billy Blunders on your way home from work. And no matter how well you think you know the road, no matter how sensibly you drive, Billy Blunders could be round the next corner. That's why you should always wear your seatbelt. Even on the shortest trips, beware of the blunders. Clunk, click. Meet Mr. Blunders. Off to work, and as usual, lots on his mind. The sort of chap you could bump into at any time. I don't know how she does it. I mean, how can anyone spend that amount of money? What does she do with it? Must be sending food parcels to her mother. Petrol. Let's get some petrol. Oh, no. I've just remembered her mother's coming this weekend. Blooming women, who needs them? Oh, <laughs> do I say. You might meet Mr. Blunders on your way to the shops. And no matter how well you think you know the road, no matter how sensibly you drive, Mr. Blunders could be round the next corner. That's why you should always wear your seatbelt. Even on the shortest trips, beware of the blunders. Clunk, click. Today, Mrs. Blunders is off to the shops. So naturally, she's got a lot on her mind. After all, she mustn't forget anything. What about a nice bit of fish with white sauce? Oh, no, no, we had fish yesterday. Oh, dear. Oh, look, Wilson's have got a sale. <laughs> that reminds me. I, oop, I must phone the vet. Spaghetti with Brussels sprouts. No, 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 I'll, I'll go to the butcher's first. Oh, bother, they're closed. Well, it'll just have to be fish. You'll never notice. You might meet Mrs. Blunders driving down the high street. And no matter how well you think you know the road, no matter how sensibly you drive, Mrs. Blunders could be round the next corner. That's why you should always wear your seatbelt. Even on the shortest trips, beware of the blunders. Clunk, click. Ah, Pelican Crossing. The light's green. Carry on, Jones. Don't panic, don't panic! Captain Manning, the light's flashing. What do we do? We, uh, we, uh, we, we... One continues to cross. If one's already on the crossing, there's plenty of time. Precisely. Carry on, Jones. One shouldn't start. One shouldn't start to cross. That's wrecking, Wilson. That's wrecking. The flashing green man means don't start to cross the road. Learn your blinking pelican signals. It's the pelican crossing! <laughs> When the red man's on, pedestrians wait, cause drivers may go, is what the green light states. Just press the button and you soon learn. The green man's on and it's your turn. And when the green man's flashing and the amber too, this is what you've got to do. Pedestrians don't start to cross, your life's more important than the time that's lost. And drivers, just you listen here, only go ahead when the crossing's clear. When you walk and when you drive, obey the pelican and stay alive. Learn how to use the pelican crossing. Come on, come on. Get your eyes tested, Napoleon. Can't you see the lights are changed? The flashing amber light on a pelican crossing means you can only go to crossing clear, Miss Rogers. Well, I'll soon clear it, all right. You're not meant to edge forward and harass the pedestrians. Who says so, the vicar? Actually, sir. No, I say so. Oh. The flashing amber light means don't go unless the crossing's clear. Learn your blinking pelican signals. Someone watching this program is going to be burgled tonight. Who? Where? When? There's no way of knowing until it happens. But when it does, you could be the first to know. 
Remember, if it opens, lock it. Lock it. Lock it. Not everyone in a supermarket is there to shop. At least, not from the shelves. Make sure your purse is out of sight. Don't make it easy for the thief. Watch out for your purse before someone else does. So I said to her, I said, if that's how you feel, I don't know what you mean. She said, I said, oh, yes, you do. She knew all right. Anyway, yeah. to cut a long story short, oh, my purse. Look after your purse before someone else does. Can you describe it, Colour? Well, I mean, a bike's a bike. How do you describe a bike? Big, awkward-looking handlebars. I don't really know what they're called. Got a lot of parts on it. If you have a bicycle but can't really describe it. No, I'm sorry. I didn't lock my bike. I didn't think it necessary. I just left it in my back way and... And you leave your bike without a lock? Uh, I'd rather not see it's in the saddlebag. It's personal. And leave valuables in your saddlebag? I didn't know there was one on it. What's the frame number? And you can't even remember the frame number. Didn't you think to lock it, sir? No, no one lock bench it round here. Well, somebody benched it, didn't they? You may well lose your bike for good. This is the second bike in two years. You think you'll be able to find it, mister? You not believe this, Sarge. Someone's just nipped me bike. It's very likely that 400 of you will be injured in your cars tomorrow. You'll be within six miles of home and doing less than 30. And it's going to happen to a lot of you ladies. You'll be shopping, collecting the kids, going to the laundrette. For some of you, the face you'll start out with in the morning won't be the same face you end up with by the evening. Why let it happen? Clunk, click, it's so simple. Clunk the car door, click the seat belt, even if you are just going round the corner, clunk, click, every trip. If you mix cross-ply and radial tyres on the same axle, or use cross-ply on the rear when you've radials on the front, you might not live to regret it. Cross-ply and radial tyres. Check how you mix them. It can happen anywhere to anyone. An ordinary street, a moment's thoughtlessness. <laughs> If there isn't a crossing nearby, be extra careful. Use your eyes and ears before you cross the road and all the way across. You can't argue with a car. Eyes and ears. It's your lookout. Today's traffic, today's driving, problems. Not if you're in control, but are you? Make sure you can cope. Keep your distance. Next time you go out in the dark, get yourself noticed. Wear something light, something reflective, or carry a newspaper. Just get yourself noticed. Wear something light. You two, come here. How old are you? Nine. Well, if you want to live to be ten, you better learn to stop at the curb. And I mean stop, right? It's part of the Green Cross Code, so use it. It's a lifesaver, believe me. OK, nothing coming. Now go. Get the picture, take it from me. Be smart, be safe. This is Sam, a man who knows his road safety, always at the alert. Sam knows people get careless when ice cream vans are about. Stop! Phew, that was close. Quickly, Sam's on the spot. He points out the danger. Don't dash across the road. Use a zebra crossing. If there isn't one, stop. Look right, look left. Then right again. If all is clear, cross the road. 
like Sam, always help one another and never let anything distract you from road safety. Stop! Beep. That ice cream could have been you. Be like Sam. Help one another and remember, don't dash across the road. From time to time through history, the greatest need has been for facts. Facts to know where to build new schools, new houses, hospitals, factories, roads. We need facts to help fight sickness and disease. And that is why on April the 25th, we are asking you to fill in the 1971 census. An army of men and women with light blue satchels will deliver and collect them from every household in Britain. With no exceptions. The form is secret. There is nothing to fear from completing it. When its contents have been analysed, it will be locked away for a hundred years under guard. And all these officials are pledged to secrecy. Identify them by the blue satchel. It's the big form with a big job to do. We need the facts from you. Come here. That's no way to cross the road, is it? Come over here, I'll show you a safe place to cross. Now here, there's no parked cars to block your view. Nothing coming. Sure? Off you go. And straight across, mind. And keep your eyes open. It's part of the Green Cross Code. Take it from me. Be smart. Be safe. Wear a helmet. Always. Any time, in any street, is road safety time. And the road safety sheriff is on patrol. Things seem quiet in this town, but hello, what's that? A balloon. And that means someone on the other end. The road safety sheriff moves into action. Stop! A balloon can float out of danger, but not you. The road safety sheriff takes them aside. He shows them the danger of playing in the streets and of parked vehicles. Cross behind this lorry and the car entering here won't see you until it's too late. Keep away from behind a car, bus or lorry if you don't want this to happen. Take a tip from the road safety sheriff. Keep away from parked vehicles and cross where the road is clear. The new decimal money will be with us on D-Day, Decimal Day, the 15th of February, 1971. The pound will be divided into a hundred new pence, and we'll do our decimal shopping in pounds and new pence only. Here are the new coins, six of them. The three silver ones are already in use. The 50 new pence, equal to 10 shillings. The 10 new pence, equal to 2 shillings. And the 5 new pence, equal to 1 shilling. The three copper coins will be introduced on D-Day. The 2 new pence, the new penny, and the new half penny. Remember the pound stays the same. Only the coins which make up the pound are changing. A general election means one thing. It's your chance to decide who you want as your Member of Parliament. And the only way to make your opinion felt is by voting. It's quite straightforward. If you're entitled to vote, you should get an official poll card. It'll tell you which polling station to go to, and it'll be open from 7 in the morning to 10 in the evening. Go early if you can. You don't need your poll card to vote, but it may save you time. Make sure you know who you want to vote for. At the polling station, give your name and address and you'll be given a ballot paper. In the booth, look for your candidate's name and put an X against it. 
nothing else. Fold the paper and put it in the ballot box. Remember, if anyone asks who you voted for, you don't have to tell them. Your vote is your business. Don Barker's got a new car. Can he drive it? Can he drive it? He's a marvellous driver. I saw him turn right into Park Street the other day. He looked into his mirror, gave a clear signal, pulled just over to the crown of the road, well before he got to the turning, and then turned when it was clear. He's a better driver than you are. And what's wrong with my driving? Remember what happened when you turned right the other day. Well, I didn't have an accident. No, but lots of people do. We just want you to be as safe as Don Barker. Ever seen a driver blow in the bag? It's getting to be a far more familiar sight than it used to be. Over 2,000 drivers are breathalyzed every week. Look at this chap. Had a marvelous time. Didn't think for one second. Now, I'm not fit to drive. Then he makes a stupid mistake. Didn't think he'd ever be stopped and have to blow in the bag. We didn't consider himself a criminal. We'd only had a couple of drinks. But he'll lose his license. And unfortunately, his wife can't drive. But he was one of the lucky ones. Last December, a quarter of all the drivers killed were known to be over the limit. Last year, there were nearly 40,000 convictions. Make sure you're not added to this year's total. Drinking and driving. It's just not worth it. When a drunken driver gets his license back... How much? His insurance can often double. What, for third party? Disqualified. Drinking and driving. He'll find it expensive wherever he goes. It's more than I paid for the motor. And the real joke is, although he's allowed to drive... It's the best thought I do, pal. Can he afford to? I'll do you a favour. I'll buy the motor off you. <laughs> Most of us reckon we can handle our motors after a few pints. <laughs> Take it easy and you don't attract the law. But what if some stupid git does this? Or this? Or this? Those few pints will just cost you your license. <laughs> so is the stupid git now. Right, I'm off then. Forget the car when you go for a drink, and you can also forget the well-meant advice. Are you sure you're okay to drive? Forget the self-denial. No, thanks, mate. I'm driving. You can even forget being a free taxi service. Just a favour. Give us a lift, mate. But most important, you can forget this. So if you really want to enjoy a drink, remember, when you fancy a jar, forget the car. Before you say you'll never get hurt. Well, every single day, hundreds of people say it can't happen to me, but it does. And the difference between an ugly smash-up and just a nasty shake-up could be simply the seatbelt habit. So before any of us say it can't happen to me, snap into that seatbelt habit. You know it makes sense. If you imagine this is your car, then this is a motorcycle. Now, when you drive up to a main road, it's easy to see other cars. But because a motorcycle is a third of the width of a car, he's very hard to see, but he's dead easy to hurt. <laughs> Nasty. And that's why, at junctions, I'm asking you to give a second thought for bikes. Stop. Think once for cars, hold it, then think again for bikes. If you want to avoid this, think once, think twice, think bike.
Diamonds are for danger. The diamond sign means a dangerous load. Look out for the diamond signs. They all mean danger. If there's an accident, when you see the diamond sign, keep away. Go to the nearest phone and dial 999. There might be an explosion or fumes that could kill you. Diamonds are for danger. Keep away. That's the key. This is my dad. That's my sister. This is my mum and my mane. She always waits there. She worries when we're not all home. Mum and Dad worry when I am. Mind you don't burn yourself. Dry yourself properly. You'll ruin your eyes. And every Saturday morning when me and Mum go shopping, my nan always tells me to look out for the traffic. Me! It's Mum she should be telling. When she wants to get to the shop opposite, she just takes off. She doesn't bother with the crossing. We've been told at school not to go between parked cars, but to use the crossings. And my mum says that's quite right when you're young. At home there's all that sit up and eat up, otherwise you won't grow up to be big and strong and healthy. And outside, where there are cars and lorries and buses wagging past, my mum should be wearing L paints crossing the road. Good job she doesn't drive. My dad does, and he's very careful, but he doesn't always practice what he preaches. Me and him had been up in the park Sunday morning. Then he remembered we hadn't bought the car. So I started walking to the subway, and he tells me to make us late for our dinner. It's very funny how grown-ups can always be right, even when they're wrong. Now, if anybody had tried that when he'd been driving, he'd have done his nut. The best, though, was when I was with Mum. Me and her were on our way home after getting me more shoes. Anyway, we have to cross the road. And she didn't even see the car coming. She was about to tell the driver what she thought about him, and he was out the car to do the same. And you know who he was? My dad! In our new car. We could have all finished up as mincemeat. And you tell me how they would have explained that to my man. Not so long ago, people with traffic problems usually found a quick answer. But today's drivers need to keep a cooler head. Do you leave enough space when following other vehicles? And if another car fills the gap, do you drop back? If you don't, this sort of thing can happen. Remember, keep your distance. Honestly, love, as if I haven't got enough to do. All these blooming doors to cope with. Like getting to a trip point Charlie around these corridors. You want a wedge of my open, Ada. Hang a bit. I've got one here, haven't I? There you go. Oh, Terry, you are a good boy. That's better. I'll remember you in my will. Ta-ta. The old Ada's cracking on about them fire doors again. They ought to leave them open all the time. It's stupid, isn't it? You come in here. If there should be a fire where you work, the quickest way to make it spread is to wedge open a fire door. Fire doors prevent fire spreading, and they're a barrier against suffocating fumes and smoke, giving you enough time to escape to safety. Never wedge open a fire door, never lock them shut. Fire doors can save lives, yours maybe. You know, each of those cars carries a whole family. Yes, even him. 
He's probably got a wife and kids, depending on his arriving home safely. What are his chances? That much less if he doesn't snap into his seatbelt. There can be some pretty frightening results from accidents where people don't wear their seatbelts, and they don't have to be fatal. After all, what's a family with mum or dad laid up in hospital? I know that if you wear a seatbelt, you reduce your chances of being killed or seriously injured by half. So what I'm getting at is this. If you won't belt up for yourselves, then please do it for them, because your seatbelt is their security. And I'm going to be around for quite a while punching that message across. Right, here's my first problem. The driver who takes all the trouble in the world to put a seatbelt on for a long drive along the motorway, but doesn't bother for just popping round the corner, because it's that popping round the corner drive that's the most dangerous, just when you think it's not worth belting up. Think about this one. Over 60% of all traffic accidents happen in built-up areas. So let's get into that seatbelt habit. And let's make it automatic, as automatic as closing the car door. After all, you wouldn't drive off without hearing this, would you? The clunk of the car door closing. Right, let's add another sound. The click of a seatbelt being fastened. Clunk, click. That makes sound sense, doesn't it? Never clunk without your click. You know, we could become a nation of clunk clickers. Is it all worth it? Well, if it's not for you, surely it is for them. Remember, this seatbelt is their security. See you, clunk clicker. Never leave a fat pan unattended. Polish a floor and put a rug on it. You might as well set a man trap. Hurry up, clean them in the warm. All right. I'll put the kettle on. to think he'd only just come from the hospital. Oh, excuse me. You haven't done it. D done what? Well, you've clunked, but you have not clicked. You haven't put your seatbelt on. Oh, well, I'm not going to Blackpool when you go around the corner. Yeah, but do you realise over 60% of all traffic accidents happen on trips like that? In fact, it's more likely on this sort of road than it is on a motorway. Oh, no. I promise you, you wear your seatbelt. It reduces your chances of being killed or seriously injured by half. Well, I just forget. You haven't been watching telly, have you? It's very easy to remember. You clunk, and then you click. Clunk, click. Clunk, click. Right, you clunk the car door. And then you click the seatbelt. <laughs> Dead right. You're going to try it? OK. Jolly good. Click. That's great. Can I go now? As long as you remember. <laughs> Please remember to clunk, click, because your seatbelt is their security. We recently road tested the current model of uh, pedestrian. <coughs> Morning cold start, poor. Fuel consumption, heavy. The model needed topping up throughout the day. Road holding, fair. But in bad conditions, brakes were unreliable. And although the same model has been in production for some time now, spare parts are hard to obtain. However, the makers assure us that it is rust-proof and all essential parts should last a lifetime. But where our model really did badly was resistance to damage. All tests show that in collision with other vehicles, it always came off worst, with 27,000 each year seriously damaged or total write-offs. So we strongly recommend that when you take this model on the roads, you proceed at all times with great caution. Welcome to Snatch of the Day, and we'll kick off with a highlight from today's play in Piccadilly. This was a fantastic move. Just watch that very beautiful right hand. He moves in and away. Beautiful. Let's see that again. 
a very lovely silent tackle from a real loner. And how about team training? Team training, vital, because it's speed. It's speed all the way. Essential with the three-handed corner. Oh, the experts can make anything look easy. Up against an inside left or an inside right, or better still, an outside left or an outside right, it is. Now, one late result just in. Oxford Street, 35. The King's Road, 21. Obviously, the crowds have been out lately. Give me a race meeting or a street market. Or this place, and it's overflowing. Tell me, where is it impossible to snatch? A nudist colony. I'm going abroad. Hooray! <laughs> You can't take all those notes with you. You can take your holiday or business allowance in traveller's checks, but not more than five pounds in sterling notes. And that five pounds is not for spending abroad, but to meet expenses in this country when you return. Do you know that? You understand English? Good. Well, remember, you can take out five pounds in notes, but not more than five pounds. The maximum is five pounds in notes. Five. Five. Five pounds in notes. Get it? Ah! You mean five pounds in notes? Dog needs danger, so get yourself seen. Every year, 300 or more people are either killed or seriously injured because their clothes catch fire. These accidents are almost always preventable. An unguarded fire, thoughtlessness in the kitchen, carelessness when handling flammable liquids. But what if it does happen? What could you do if your clothes caught fire? First, get down on the floor as quickly as you can so the flames can't spread upwards. Then roll over to smother the flames, and if there's a rug or a blanket handy, wrap it around your body because it will help to put out the fire. And once the flames are out, call for help, either a doctor or an ambulance. By following these simple rules, you can save yourself from serious injury. You could even save your life. So remember, get down on the ground, roll over to put out the flames, and then call for help. Giving advice on home security never comes easy. Take round here. All the houses looking in each other. Lots of kids around. Mum's at home all day long. A stranger stands at a mile. The result? Hardly any crime at all. But just walk around the corner, a few streets away. Lots of flats and bedsits. People away for the weekend. Easy pickings for the casual break-in merchant. Unless you take precautions. If you want to know how secure your home is, Ask yourself this question. Suppose you came home one night and found you'd lost your keys. How would you break in? If it's easy, then it's easy for a thief. They're only human too. Quickest and best, and inside. So make life difficult for them. And then move on somewhere else. Spend a few pounds wisely on good locks for the doors and windows. You could avoid all the emotional upset and aggravation of a burglary and save yourself thousands of pounds in the long run. 
so. If you're not sure that your home is reasonably secure, phone your crime prevention officer down at your local Nick. If he's not in, just leave a message. He'll ring you back. Or pop round as soon as he can. OK? Hi there. Uh-oh, this looks dangerous. Will they see that car? I think I better have a word with those two. That wasn't very clever, was it? If you'd been looking and listening all the way across, that wouldn't have happened. That's better. Remember, always use the Green Cross code, because I won't be there when you cross the road. Emergency! Calling Green Cross man! Crosses. Where do you think you're going, you Dumbo? Green Cross. When you get to the curb, always stop, stop, stop. Sorry, Green Cross. Remember, stop near the curb, not on it. That's the way. Always use the Green Cross code, because I won't be there when you cross the road. Man. Looks like you two need a lesson in crossing the road. My little friend is going to show you how. First, find a safe place to cross. Here? <laughs> a safe place away from parked cars, where you can see the road is clear and drivers can see you. <laughs> Stop near the curb, but not too close. Look all around and listen for traffic. If traffic is coming, let it pass. When there is no traffic near, walk straight across, looking and listening all the time. We won't be there when you cross the road, so always use the Green Cross Hound. This is the last week of our seatbelt campaign, and we're out to prove conclusively that people really do care about their families. Stay with me and see how many drivers have developed the seatbelt habit. These are some that we caught on film during just one morning this week. Will he or won't he? Ah, that's good news. And here's the second. Now watch this one. There's one who didn't. He must know by now that a seatbelt reduces the chances of being killed or injured by half. Some people don't seem to care about anybody. Now what about this fella? Another winner. There's a clunk. And there's a click. Yes, it's catching on. Now, come on, love. That's great. Terrific. Overall, the people of the Tyne Tees area have proved they care not just for themselves, but for their families. I'm very proud of all you clunk clickers, wherever you are. Safe driving. burst pipe. Here's what you should do. Shut off the water immediately at the stop valve. If you don't know where it is, find out now. Then, if flooding continues, turn on the cold taps to empty the storage tank. But remember to turn off the immersion heater, or put out the boiler if you have one, before turning on the hot taps. Find the burst pipe and bind it tightly with waterproof material. If the water has come in contact with any electrical fittings, turn off at the mains. And then, when you've done all that, call the plumber. Well done, sir. An object lesson in dealing with a burst pipe. What a pity you let it happen in the first place. <laughs>